All right, this is the second video in the front end setup videos uh, collection here. Um, the first video you should work through first will take you through the tasks of setting up GitHub account, uh, installing Git, and installing Visual Studio Code. Once you've got that done, then you can return here and we're going to pick up on the Hello World, so working with a project. Um, and now one thing to know is that all of the steps in that first video, you really only have to do them once. Um, they will be set up and they will work for you over and over as you work through different projects. Uh, also this first step, create a projects folder on your local computer, you only have to do that once too. So let's just get that done and I'm just going to do that. Um, you can either do it in the GUI, so let's do it there. And if I go to, let's say I want to put it under, uh, well, first of all, let, let me find my, my users folder. So I'm, I'm going to go to users, Becky. And just to make this easy to find, I'm going to drag it to quick access. So now I'm in users, Becky. And this is the equivalent of that uh, tilde slash directory that I was my, my users Becky directory that I was showing in the command line and here I'm going to just right click and new folder projects and I like to have a projects folder so that I don't get my projects all intermingled with anything else that window happens to be keeping track of so now all my projects should end up in there and if I go to get bash, let's see right here, go to my PWD, my working directory, if I CD to projects, there it is. And it is empty. But I have this projects directory so that you can kind of see how the GUI maps to the command line like that. All right, so the first thing that you want to do in doing your hello world is go to the github.com su web dev. Um, account and find hello world and then we're just going to fork it so forking is just kind of like copying to your own local uh, directory so you, if you, you want to be signed on to your github.com and then when you click fork it will well I have two of these but I'll, I'll go to the Rebecca Peltz one um, and it will just copy really it's copying history and all sorts of things but but it, you will get basically a copy of the hello world uh, code that we want to use to, to practice setting up a project with the local environment. So once we've got that, we can click on clone or download. Okay, and now you notice there it says clone with HTTPS. We don't want to clone with HTTPS. We want to use SSH. We've set up those SSH keys and you can tell you're picking up the right address for cloning if it's get at github then your username and then the project name so if you click on this little copy icon it will copy it into your clipboard and we're in the clone with ssh so let's take a look at the next step we forked we've copied to clipboard we open up visual studio code so mine is already open let's say that it wasn't i'll just and then so i'll hit the windows key type in code and that will select Visual Studio Code. Now I'm going to open that folder, that projects folder. So I'll go open folder and then it's going to be under Becky and projects. So I'll just click on that, select folder. Okay, and there's nothing in there, but now I'm going to do my control tick to open my environment or my terminal. And we've got the bash terminal that I set up in the last video. Um, I'm sitting here in projects now and I'm going to type in git clone and then I'm going to paste that that directory that I had out of and I just right clicked and it pasted it. Um, and then hit enter and it now the first time you clone um, a repository locally it's going to ask you about the authenticity of this this will only happen the first time it's writing this information to a, a local file in that .ssh directory that we created so you don't have really have to worry too much but just say yes we're ready to go and then it will clone it and you can see here that it has created this uh, folder 
underneath projects. But to make things a little easier, I'm actually going to open that folder. So I'll go File, Open Folder, Projects, and then Hello World. And this way we will be actually sitting in the root of that project. So if I control tick here and PWD, you can see I'm actually sitting in the root. And if I LS, I have all of I have the files that I need all available there. So let's take a look at the next step. We've done the control tick. We pasted the clone, open the folder. So now we're ready to open or to modify code. So here I've got a couple notes that you're going to use control S to save code for Windows, um, control tick um, to get into the um, to get into the terminal. And once we've made some changes, we're going to execute these commands. So let's before we do that, let's take a look at this uh, code here. So we have this index.html. Hello world from Jane student. I'm going to change that to my name. Keep help. Oops. And I'll also change this. So I changed some code essentially. And then I'm going to use Control S to save it, or you could do File Save. You can see it shows you that Control S will work. And now I get to use my Go Live server. So if you see this Go Live down here, I'm going to. This will help me to preview what it looks like when I run this code. Um, one other thing uh, before I run Go Live is notice the X here. So when I'm changing um, code, like if I make a change here, it'll be a little zero. And that tells me that I haven't saved it. So if I want to save it, if I want to, if I then do Control S, it goes to X. Now I know it's saved. So that's just a little indicator that it's ready to, it's saved and it's ready to be previewed. So if I click on Go Live, uh, it's going to ask me because I downloaded it allow access. And you can see it pops up this preview screen. And so the URL is this 127. The IP, it's an IP address for a local, and in all local IP addresses are 127.0.0.0 for the most part. And then we have a port 5500, and then we have the name of our file that we're looking at. So, and the one thing that you'll find is that Live Server will automatically update that for you. So like if I come in and I type another exclamation, and save it, it automatically updates it. So Live Server makes changes on the fly. Um, and then the other thing to know about Live Server is that if you click on this again, it'll shut the server down. Okay, so now if I go here, it doesn't work. Well, it won't show anything. But it's just a toggle. If I hit it again, it'll open it up again. So that's the way you can preview your code. So when you find that your code looks good, I'm going to say don't show again because I, I got it now. Um, when you are when you finish previewing your code and you think it looks good, then you're ready to check it in to GitHub. And that's where you're going to use these three commands. So first of all, let's pull this over a little bit. First of all, we're going to do get add. And then you can, if you just want to check in one file, you can say get add index.html. I, you'll see me a lot just say get add dot. And that means like if I've changed a couple of files, it's going to say anything that's changed, go ahead and we're going to stage it for, for check in. And one other thing, get status. That actually will show us what we've modified. So you can see here, I've only modified index.html. So that's all that I'm um, that's all that I'm going to stage. So my git add is going to stage whatever I tell it to stage, which when I give it a dot is going to stage anything that's read there. So if I say git add dot, now if I do get status, you'll see it turned it green. That means it's staged. It's ready to be committed. This is like a three-step process. So the next step is to do the git commit. So git commit. And then dash m says it's a message. Uh, this is going to be like a description of the change. And I'll just say changed to use my name. OK, so I give it a message and hit Enter. 
And now if I do get status, I won't see anything, but I'll see this little notice telling me I need to push. Now the next, the final command, get push origin master, is going to push it up to GitHub. So if I type that in, it will run this um, push. And when it's all done without error, if I do get status, I should see that it's clean. So yes, up to date and clean. Now, if I go out to get to my uh, hello world, that I forked, you know, and by the way, you can see that it was forked. It's not, I didn't create it from scratch. But now you can see this index.html. It shows the message that I gave, and it shows it was done 41 seconds ago. And if I click on that message, it shows me exactly like in red what, what went away and what got it, what got it, what came in. So the red is no longer there, and the green is now there. So that's a, a pretty handy thing. And now, in order to have, we're going to let GitHub s serve this to the world. So this 127 service, this is local. Nobody else can see it. You can't really share it with anybody. But once I've got it installed on GitHub, I can get GitHub to serve it up to the world. And the way I do that is I go into Settings and scroll down to GH Pages, GitHub Pages. And for the source, I'm going to choose Master and then Save. And now it pops back to the top. But if I scroll down, I can see that your site is being published at online and Watts Hello World. OK, now the Becky Peltz Online is because I, I gave it a domain name. And that's something you'll do in future classes. The actual command would be HTTP colon and then um, it's HTTPS colon slash slash then your account name dot github dot io slash watts 3010 hello world so we'll take a look at this but as long as it has a blue background it's still publishing when that background turns green now it's ready to be looked at so I'm going to open this up in a new tab I guess I opened that in the same tab. Let's try opening that in a different tab. The link in new tab. And you can see the title says, Hello, Becky Peltz, because I changed the title. And then this says, Hello, from Peltz. OK, so I changed that. Um, if the yours will look more like the name of your account, .github, Io. So you your code is stored in github.com. It's rendered in github.io. And because I have a domain name, it'll automatically change that to Becky Peltz Online. But it, those are kind of these are the kind of the two uh, URLs that you would turn in for the assignment. One, when we say like the deployed or rendered code, it would be this uh, github.io. And the code would be um, this. Uh, github.com. So if you now copy that, I'm going to copy this into my buffer, into my clipboard. You can come back to your main code page, click on edit under website. You can paste in that URL for the rendered page. And then it will always be available. If someone gets to your code, they can also pull up your rendered page very easily. So that's how you would uh, modify the code and push it up to GitHub, make it available to uh, the World Wide Web through github.io, and then save the link. So, so here we're just um, seeing that the code changed, and then we deployed it. Um, we did some deployments so that it was run on github.io. Um, and that is the that is what we need to get our dev environment going. Now here's some handy keystrokes for Mac and Windows. You know, sometimes when I'm doing videos, I say Control C, and it's I forget if I I forget that you may not be running on the same machine as me. But in general, Control C means Command C on the Mac. So Command is that little key that's kind of next to the spacebar. 
on the Mac, but we use the control key for many of things that we use command for on Windows. Um, okay, this also shows you some shortcuts on going to the end of line and beginning of line on each machine uh, and opening the terminal in VS Code using the control tick. Now, both of those do use control, no command there. And then running an app in Mac versus running an app in Windows. So, I hope that this helps you to get your first project going on your own uh, computer. All right.